Okay. Uh, hey, folks. Okay. First, I'm just going to say a brief word on the um, debt limit. Um, our concern all along has been uh, doing this through a process that is we were worried about a process that would be convoluted, lengthy, and risky. And we believe we shouldn't be doing anything that puts uh, our full faith and credit in jeopardy. Our goal has been to increase the debt limit. We want a simple majority without a convoluted, risky, lengthy process. And it looks like the Republicans will help us facilitate that. So we feel very good about where we're headed on debt ceiling. It's not done till it's done, but the idea of letting Democrats carry it ourselves is what we've always said, and that's the direction we are headed in. Okay? Now, let me go back now to build back better. So, Senate Democrats are focused on passing uh, the Biden Build Back Better bill before Christmas, and I'm joined by Senators Casey and Warnock. Senator Duckworth was supposed to be here, but still at the White House, I believe, but is part of what may get here a little later. Now, no one ever said passing a bill of this magnitude would be easy or would be quick, but getting this across the finish line will be worth all the long days and late nights for one simple reason. And that is, at its core, Build Back Better is the most significant step Congress has taken in decades to help American families lower costs, cut taxes for working and middle class Americans, and invest in good paying jobs while fighting the climate crisis. It's that simple. Build Back Better will make it cheaper for parents to raise their kids by providing the largest investment in child care in American history. It'll help our economy. Wherever you go, you hear about shortages of labor, one of the main reasons is inadequate child care. By expanding child care, we're going to help parents get back to work and expand the labor force in a very significant way. For the first time ever, America will get pre-K. That could save parents up to $8,600 a year per child. And Build Back Better will also extend the child tax credit that Democrats passed under the American Rescue Plan. This simple lifeline, $300 check in the mail for each child each month, has been a game changer to cut poverty in half. Build Back Better will also help the most at-risk Americans have some stability by, by, by uh, providing the largest investment in public housing ever, and it'll save Americans even more money by making prescription drugs like insulin, which has skyrocketed in cost, cheaper. Build Back Better takes the long overdue steps to fight the climate crisis, which costs our country tens of billions of dollars each year. And we're going to put millions of people to work in good paying jobs to help fight that crisis, with an emphasis on poorer people and people of color who will get job training and uplift our whole economy that way. We're going to continue working to get things done before the Christmas holiday. And one more point on this week. As we continue to learn more about the Omicron variant, it's, important, it's an important moment for the federal government and national leaders to double and triple down on encouraging all eligible Americans to get vaccinated and boosted as soon as possible. This week, Republicans want to take us in the opposite direction with an anti-science, anti-vaccine vote that not only divides our country, but hurts our ability to fight COVID. If their plans go into effect, COVID will linger longer, and the chance of new variants and new more dangerous variants occurring increases. It is anti-science. It is anti-common sense. It makes no sense. The Congressional Review Act resolution the Republicans are pushing would overturn the rule requiring businesses of more than 100 workers to require vaccinations overturning this common sense rule, which is for the good of America's health, is ridiculous, makes no sense, and Democrats um, believe it is the wrong way to go because the science is clear. Well-designed vaccine requirements are effective in decreasing deaths, decreasing infections, decreasing variants, and keeping Americans safe. We do not want to go back to the days 
where people didn't believe in science, such as when they thought the Earth was the center of the universe. We just can't go back that way. And that's why we think this CRA is a very bad thing to do. Uh, I am now uh, proud to call on Senator Casey. Well, thanks, Leader Schumer. I wanted to start by outlining what I think are the reasons why we've got to get Build Back Better passed. And um, so, so much of this is about what happens to families. We've got to pass it for a whole host of reasons. At least uh, two or three are relevant, I think, or most relevant. One is Build Back Better will help families reduce their costs, whether it's the cost of um, child care, quality affordable child care, whether it's the cost of prescription drugs, whether it's the cost of um, home and community-based services, uh, not only for the cost to the family, but the lower, lower, lowering of the cost we can do for uh, the federal government. In the, in, the, in the context of home and community-based services, we have to decide whether we want to pay $90 for um, care in long-term care in an institution or whether you want to pay $26,000 uh, for care in the home. 90000 versus 26 is a big savings. But mostly what we're talking about here are those lower costs for families. Second reason to pass Build Back Better is to get people back to work literally. We've heard over and over again about how difficult it is for people get, to get back to work if they don't have uh, a reliance on a quality affordable child care. Uh, obviously, COVID-19 plays a role in getting people back to work. We've got to make sure that we continue to, to combat the virus. That's why the, the rescue plan was so essential. But this, this uh, focus on getting people back to work is also relevant, again, in the context of home and community-based services. A lot of people are doing care or providing care for their, a family member. They, they literally can't get back to work because of that responsibility. It, it's an act of love that they've under, undertaken to help someone in their family. So whether it's lowering costs for families or your focus on getting people back to work, it's essential that we pass Build Back Better. The third reason, of course, is long-term investment in a high-skilled workforce. That's why pre-kindergarten education is essential. That's why Senator Warnock's efforts to uh, provide more Medicaid in states that don't have it for people that need to get ahead and have the benefit of health care is important. The long-term investment in children and families pays huge dividends uh, for our workforce. Finally, I'll say this. There, there's appropriately a lot of focus on the infrastructure bill and the benefits to communities. I know in Pennsyl Pennsylvania, for example, that bill is going to allow us to repair and replace a lot of bridges, just one example of probably hundreds. But for a lot of families, that bridge to work, getting back to work, isn't simply the physical bridge. It's a bridge uh, of caregiving. It's the bridge of getting the help that they need. And in most cases, you all know, it's her challenge. Her bridge to work is quality, affordable child care. Her bridge to work is often home care making sure that not only is it available for her mom, but that the person providing that care isn't paid only $12 an hour, which is the case for most uh, home care workers, most of them being women of color. And finally, uh, her bridge to work might be care for a child with a disability uh, or so many other challenges that she faces getting to work. So the good news is if we make this investment in lowering costs for families, uh, getting people back to work and preparing the workforce for the future, that, in fact, becomes a bridge to that future. Senator Warnock. Uh, Build Back Better is about us doing the hard work, standing up for the hardworking families of America. And I'm so very proud as one of the newest members of the Senate to be a part of this hard work. Uh, it really is what matters. And a lot of the provisions that have already been lifted up uh, are really about giving ordinary families a chance. Uh, Pre-K, child care, uh, lowering the cost of prescription drugs. And one of my favorite provisions, the expanded child tax credit which is the largest tax cut for hardworking families in American history. It cuts child poverty in half by 46% in the state of Georgia, 
I've talked to a lot of these families when they first started receiving uh, this tax credit back in July as they were getting their kids ready for school. And what I was struck by is what poor people, what working people do when they're just given a little bit of breathing room, when they're given just a little bit of support, they buy extravagant things like food and coats for their kids and participation in an extracurricular activity that gives their child a chance. But what I really want to underscore uh, as we talk about passing Build Back Better today is uh, the closing of the coverage gap. We have some 4.4 million Americans, 646,000 Georgians in the coverage gap. The Affordable Care Act was passed more than a decade ago, and we're still pushing and trying to make sure that everybody is covered by this promise that we've made to the American people. Health care is a human right. And if it's a human right, it's not a human right in 38 states, is a human right in every state. And so I'm grateful that we finally have a fix for the coverage gap. 640,000, 646,000 Georgians, 4.4 million Americans. And we're largely talking about the working poor, folks who are not poor enough for conventional Medicaid, but they can't afford a private health insurance program. And so they go without any care at all in the richest country in the world. When I was running, I spent time in rural Georgia, where some 10 hospitals in 10 years have closed, largely because they don't have paying customers that they could have if these folks had coverage. And so we're going to continue to fight for this. I'm glad it's in the bill. I literally got arrested fighting for Medicaid expansion. And now my office is down the hall from the rotunda where I got arrested fighting for Medicaid expansion. And so I'm going to make sure that this stays in the bill and that we get it over the finish line. Dr. King said that of all the injustices, inequality in health care is the most shocking and the most inhumane. We're much better than this, and it's past time to get it done. I'm glad we are much closer today. Thank you. Okay. Questions? Yes, go ahead. Look, you'll, when the House sends the bill over, you will see that. Uh, the bottom line, again, I'll just repeat what I said before. We always said we wanted a process that was simple, not risky, not convoluted, didn't put us through lots of different votes. And, but we Democrats were always willing to carry the burden. That's what's going to happen. Yes. But isn't this bank shot through the House just the most compelling evidence yet that we need to change the rules in the Senate to just do this by 50 votes on a regular basis? Well, look. Um, a lot of us would have wanted to make sure that the kind of proposal that Senator McConnell had years ago, which put it on the President's desk, happened. Uh, our Republican friends wouldn't go along with it, and our number one goal, get this done, get it done with just Democratic votes without a convoluted, risky process, is what we're on the verge of achieving. Yes. Uh, no, I mean, there have been four corner negotiations on the NDAA. Uh, the four leaders of the de uh, de lead uh, defense uh, committees, armed services committees, and it's our view that we will uh, pass that bill as the House sends it because it's been negotiated already. Please yes. Go. Is it your goal to get a debt limit increase because you passed the midterm election? Look, you'll see, you'll see the debt limit when we, when we get it done. Okay? Please yes. No, I think, look, the position to me is pretty clear, and that is that uh, the more people that are vaccinated, the safer America will be, and we should encourage everything we can do to do it. That is the overwhelming view of the President and of the vast majority of Democrats. Leader, yes. Leader, you've emphasized that members are ready to hold the burden <clears throat> on this debt, but are, are you comfortable still putting the number on it for your most vulnerable the, As I said, the bottom line, get it done quickly, get it done with Democratic votes, not with a convoluted, lengthy process that's risky. That's what we're on the verge of doing. Leader, yes, sure. last one. The deadline that you need to pass BBB by in order to ensure the child uh, tax credit payment goes out on January 6th. We want to get it done by Christmas. Leader, okay, thank you, everybody. When will you hold a vote on HRA?